good communication keeps communities connected. And in small communities in particular, this often depends on someone local who is willing to take the task on. Hi everyone, I'm Johnny Thompson and welcome to the Village Halls podcast, sponsored by Allied Westminster, the UK's largest specialist provider of Village Hall insurance and the home of Village God. Keeping up with what's going on around us is really important. And in small rural communities, we often need someone who is keen to pass on useful news and information. One such local news hound is Doug Allen, who since 2014 has been a trustee of Topcliffe and Aisenby Village Hall in North Yorkshire. Doug, who is a former public relations officer, joins me today to talk about the importance of local communication. Hi, Doug, and welcome. Good morning, Johnny, and thank you very much for inviting me to come on today. An absolute pleasure. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Now, let's begin with a bit of background here. Tell me about what you used to do as a career before you were undoubtedly coerced. Because <laughs> that's how it usually goes, doesn't it, Doug? Yeah, it certainly does. Coerced onto your local village hall committee. Yes, well, I'm retired now. In fact, I've been retired for 12 years. And I did retire earlier, I hasten to add. Yeah. But I was a public relations officer for in, in local government. Uh, mm-hmm. I worked in communications for Middlesbrough Borough Council for many years and then went into private practice and worked for a small company based here in the, in North Yorkshire, at, well, at Gisborough. Uh, and, th- and that gave me quite a, a, a wide interest of things to do across the country, working with many local authorities at all levels, particularly doing communications audits and things of that type, but uh, many other projects in public relations and marketing as well. Very interesting life, really. And I imagine having that skill set was perhaps one of the main reasons behind you getting involved with, with Topcliffe and Aisenby Village Hall initially, was it? Uh, probably. I was still doing a part-time job. Uh, I looked after a group called F40, which is, uh, is concerned about the funding in education, and I was secretary of that. So I was still doing a bit of work, uh, so I kept my hand in. Um, and then in about 2014, I was approached by a friend of mine, uh, who was on the village hall committee, uh, and the, she told me that uh, they were about to start looking at a major improvement for the village hall, uh, but they didn't have the skills to raise money or to deal with some of the technicalities associated with with, with that. Right. So um, uh, her husband, who, who is technically minded, and me, who is administratively minded, were co-opted or coerced, if you like, Onto that committee, <laughs> uh, my job was to look after uh, fundraising, and we did quite well over a, about fifteen to eighteen months. I managed to uh, get about one hundred and forty thousand pounds together for them, wow. and they did a major refurb of the village hall, building a big extension, and. Uh, giving it a new life for another 30 or 40 years before we'll have to do it again, I guess. Fantastic. And don't explain to me a little bit about the geography there, because you've got Topcliffe and you've got Aisenby. And so the yeah. village hall really covers kind of two small villages, doesn't it, that, that are sort of separated, I understand, in various ways as well. <laughs> yes, they are. It's Topcliffe and Aisenby Village Hall, but Topcliffe is a village of around about 300 and well, maybe 400 people now. Yeah. And Aisenby is a village of 300 people. We're in different boroughs. Uh, we're in different parliamentary constituencies. Yeah. Uh, but we're in the same county. And the only other thing that separates us is the River Swale. But we have a bridge in Topcliffe, which this year celebrates its 400th anniversary. And uh, that bridge has. Uh, brought us together just like the village hall has. Um, The two parish councils got together in 1945 and started discussing the idea of a community building that they could share. Uh, And it took till about 1961 before the village hall was built. Uh, And we've worked together for our communities ever since. And it's worked very well. Brilliant. And and rather like that bridge bringing communities together you you've you've <laughs> you've you've done your own thing in terms of bringing um people around the the, the community together i guess and so we tell me tell me about something called the tatler doug that you became involved with 
Well, the, the, the Tatler is a, a, a newsletter that's in its 26th year, uh, four, t- four times each year. It's a quarterly. Yeah. It's a, it's a, um, a, a newsletter that's had various e- editors over the year, and I inherited it in 2018. <laughs> uh, and I, so I, I write it all. And I sell the advertising in, in in the publication, which in turn pays for the printing. Right. Uh, and it's a joy to actually do it. I, I really enjoy it. And bearing in mind that the two villages are really quite small, I never have any difficulty in filling it w- with material. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> give, give me a kind of taste, Doug, as to what sort of stuff you might feature in there. Oh, I, the well, I do, I do little features about the history of the place, about, uh, things that have happened over the years because there's this is a Magna Carta village. Uh, mm-hmm. It had links to the Magna Carta. Please don't ask me what they are now because I can't think what they are. But uh, we we, uh, we have signposts uh, at the edge of the village saying this is a Magna Carta village. And I've written about that and uh, I've written about other things to do with the history of the bridge, the history of the church, um, the history of the Topcliffe Fair, which ha- used to happen every year. It was a little bit like Appleby Fair, really, uh, yeah. with uh, the travellers, travelling community coming in and trading horses and all sorts of things. Uh, so there's a lot of history to the village, and uh, I put features like that in. But it's all about the things that are happening as well. So the next edition, which will be out on the cusp of May, June, uh, May and June, 31st of May, really, will have a programme for our Platinum Jubilee celebrations and yeah, of course. that sort and reports on the Scarecrow competition, which was held last weekend, uh, with pictures of all the royal-themed scarecrows. All right. Uh, so that was, that'll all be uh, quite interesting. There's always lots of news to put in. And I carry a parish council report and a, a village hall report and things of that sort. Yeah, and that's it. As you say, there's always something going on. And if you've mm. got your, as long as you've got your finger on the pulse, there, then you can, uh, you can, you can spread the news. And you said it, it's it's quarterly, yes. the Tatler. But as it as it turns out, after the the pandemic struck, the locals needed a bit more frequent news and information, didn't they? <laughs> well, I felt they did. So yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I took it upon myself to uh, write an email uh, and circulate it uh, to the addresses that I had at that time, uh, and about 150 people that I had. And uh, I said that I'd I'd write an email each week if people were happy to receive it about all the things that were happening at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You've got to think that our social and community life virtually came to a halt, as it did everywhere, of course. Uh, And so all communication on the street or in the village hall or or whatever virtually stopped. And lots of people found themselves in difficulty. Where Mm -hmm. do I find information about where to get medicines? Where do we, uh, how do I get food? When can I shop? Things of that sort. Uh, And what are the restrictions that the government are uh, applying? Uh, Lots of people had difficulty understanding those. As as, as we now know, lots of people did, didn't they? Yeah. And Uh, and I guess in a local context as well, I mean, you, you, you may understand them on a national basis but i guess looking back you know we, we were all confused what does this mean for me where i am and where That's i right. live yeah indeed and so I, I tried to put a layman's view on those and write about them uh, and i think that was very helpful and people uh, were grateful for that assistance at the time but that was back in the first email went out on the 4th of april i think it was in uh, 2020 yeah uh, and a few weeks ago, a month or so ago, I had uh, the the 100th edition, right? Uh, and I'm writing the 107th at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so and, yeah, uh, so it's, it's still... moved on a little bit, and I I moved coronavirus to the back of the email eventually uh, mm-hmm. because uh, my partner told me I had to, <laughs> and. Uh, she said Everyone, it, everyone's it, bored with that. Yeah, let's move yes, on. It's, yeah. Getting bored, and it's diminishing in in interest um, mm-hmm. as people hoped they were going to be relieved entirely of this uh, pandemic it's not the case uh, but so i still do carry a little bit of covid information 
uh, toward, uh, at the back of the email. And I, I carry statistics about um, what the prevalence of COVID is at the moment, what the R rate is, and things of that type. Uh, yeah. But the rest of the email has developed into an information email about what's going on, events coming up, what people are doing. Last week's mentioned a funeral that is taking place in the village tomorrow of somebody who is quite a character in the village. Yeah. Uh, so all sorts of different bits and pieces. I'm quite surprised, actually, how comprehensive uh, the email has become uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and how much is happening. And most importantly, it staggers me how how I get to know about these things. Uh, things just sort of come my way and people send me information that I, that I can use. And, of course, I've got to use social media and face, Facebook in particular yeah, to pick up things, things that to pick, pick stuff up. Yeah, it must take quite a bit of work, Doug, really. Well, it, it, yes, it does. But I, I've, I've got myself into the habit of just writing a little bit now and then as the week progresses. Mainly as I, as, as I see things, I put them into the email. And that, I find that way I don't have a really hard job on, the, on Saturday trying to get it ready for 9 o'clock on Sunday when it goes out. Yeah. But it all, it all comes together, and I'm I'm quite happy about the way it it works, and whether it'll go on forever or not, I don't know. Maybe until I think people are getting bored with it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I'm just looking at a recent edition of uh, of what you call the Sunday email here, Doug, and I, yeah, there's all kinds of things. You know, as you, as you mentioned, there's the, the the funeral of somebody somebody local. There's stuff about a missing person. I can see there's something about some despicable criminal activity that's yes. <laughs> that's been going on local, and 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 the scarecrows that you mentioned yes. as well. A bit yeah. of scarecrow spotting. T- tell me a bit more about these scarecrows. Doug, it sounds interesting. Well, this, this wasn't a village hall activity as it happens, but uh, yeah. a, a friend of mine, Jenny Bumby, is uh, the chairman of the Friends of Topcliffe School. Okay. And she uh, she worked with uh, three or four neighbouring villages to organise a scarecrow uh, trail. Uh, and the scarecrows had to be created with a royal theme. And they were all positioned throughout the bank holiday weekend just gone. And people went around and they voted on which they thought was the best by putting money in a in in a box, and uh, <laughs> we're waiting for the results of that now. I think we'll get get them today or tomorrow. So a bit of fundraising then. So yeah, it was yeah, quite a good, quite a good. That was our first one, uh, and I think it'll probably uh, be repeated. But uh, I don't know whether they've decided that yet. So the so the Tatler and the in the Sunday email obviously do a lot to to help the local community, Doug. And you clearly have a passion for communication. Anyway, what what lies behind this? I mean, it's really valuable, isn't it? To And, and I guess maybe this is just your way of making a contribution and making a difference, is it? Uh, well, I'd like to think it makes some uh, a contribution to village life. Uh, yeah. I do it independently. It's me. And I like living in the village, and I like to know what's going on. Yeah. It's awful when you hear that there was an event on and you didn't know about it. So I hope that other people like to at least have a forewarning that something's coming up, so what's on at the cinema in Thursk, uh, things of that nature. For me, I, mean, I think it's a bit of the privilege living in a village and being part of a, a small community, but it does rely on people doing things to make life work. Uh, and to make community life successful. I like to think I'm a part of that. I'm not so committed that I'd want to be a parish councillor, but uh, yeah. I don't mind being on the village hall committee and uh, I don't mind doing my bit of publicity work with the tattler and the email. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, they, they nicely tie things together. Exactly. That links back to the skills and, and the kind of the passion for communication that you've had, clearly throughout most of your life with the, with, with, with the career that you follow well, as well. I mean, communication is uh, pretty critical for most things, isn't it? If you don't have it, uh, what's the point? <laughs> well, obviously, you know, I, I, I share that, that passion that you have as well anyway. So I, I know exactly where you're coming from. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, good local communication is really, really important. And it's great, you know, that you've taken this task on there. At, yeah. Well, at so, somebody Cliff appreciates it because uh, I had a several nominations to a, an award scheme that Hamilton 
uh, Borough Council run. And uh, yeah. I was awarded a Hamilton Hero badge. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Which is I love nice. it. <laughs> and, and on the 100th edition, I was at a soup and sweet lunch in the, in the village hall. And I was surprised by a group of people who made an announcement and presented with me with four reams of paper and uh, some other gifts to mark my 100th edition and to say thank you. The 100 reams of paper is, uh, sorry, the four reams of paper is to do with the fact that each week I print off 12 copies of the email and I walk around the village delivering them to people who don't have a computer or a smartphone. Yeah, yeah and that's another thing as well, isn't it? Some people are in some ways isolated or, or maybe lonely and things like that. It, 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 it's a great way of, of, of helping those people as well. I think that they in particular will welcome it. And I, I do get stopped and uh, I get a jar of jam or or pickle off people. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. How, can I pay you? No, you can't pay me. But, uh, yeah. uh, well, he's a jar of pickle. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> Ex- extra little incentives there. Wonderful. Mm. I love it. And, uh, of course, talking to heroes, the one thing we haven't mentioned is uh, is that you've, you've been nominated for our Unsung Heroes Award this year. So, Congratulations with that. It's early days, of course, with oh, the yes, with yes. the nominations. But um, but congratulations, Doug, on being put forward with that. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, it might need a little bit of adjustment by the time we get to the awards in October. But uh, <laughs> we <we're, we're> three <laughs> certainly be uh, well if we're on one hundred and seven now. Yeah, we'll probably be on about one hundred and thirty by then. I would think. <laughs> Yeah, well, it is. It's a it's a fantastic contribution, and it's just a kind of, you know, you're you're just a kind of example that we're we're looking for for these awards. You know, people who go about some sterling work behind the scenes to really help the the local community, and and perhaps it's done, you know, very much in a way that is unsung. You know, not 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 many of us know about it, but uh, it's great to get the opportunity to well to highlight, nobody, highlight the work you're doing. Nobody's looking for recognition of that sort, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's nice that some somebody uh, would want to do that. It's not why we do it, Doug. Otherwise, <laughs> we would have stopped. We would have stopped a long time ago. Absolutely. Wouldn't we? <laughs> yes. But listen, thanks so much for coming on and um, explaining, you know, a little bit about about what you do there. Yeah, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, if, if anybody wants to get in touch to see how it, what I do, I'd be more than happy to talk to them. Yeah, because you've got a you've you've got a website as well, haven't you, Doug? With uh, well, with I have a, a website that uh, uh, has information about the Sunday email on. Uh, yeah, and that's just Doug Allen. At, dot co dot uk and anybody can yeah. look at that and see an email and uh, it's archived there uh, yeah. and it, it explains why i set it up and how it goes uh, and they can look at the tattlers if they wish but they'd have to go to the top cliff parish website to do that yeah that's yeah, where well, they're I always, I always put some links with uh, each episode as well so i'll oh, make sure good. those various ones yeah. are are on there but um doug it's been great chatting with you well i hope today. it's been uh, useful for people well as i say you know your passion for communication is, is is obviously something that i that i share and just well done keeping everyone around you there in your neck of the woods informed brilliant work okay thank you very much yeah thanks again doug for for coming on and and don't forget our wonderful villages awards everyone there's, there's five awards altogether, including the Unsung Hero or Heroes Award that, that Doug's been nominated for. Each winning award will result in £1,000 for your local village, church or community hall. So make sure you enter. And if you can, spread the word. And that's all, folks, for this episode. Thanks, as always, to our headline sponsor and specialist insurance provider, Allied Westminster, for making our podcast possible and whose services you can discover more about at villageguard.com and to online booking system provider Hallmaster, who also sponsor our podcast and can be found at hallmaster.co.uk. You've been listening to the Village Halls podcast, a unique listening community for Britain's village, church and community halls and anyone interested in the vital services they provide. We'll be back again soon with another episode. So if you haven't already, visit the villagehallspodcast.com to subscribe, sign up for updates, link through to our social media pages and find out more. Until the next time, goodbye for now. <laughs>